were asked by Missiles and Fire Control in Orlando to help them build a R&D Tower 2. I had built originally 12 years prior R&D Tower 1. And that's 254,000 square feet uh, of space on six floors with parking for, that first one was parking for 800 cars. So they asked us to help them build Tower 2, but they had a problem. They had to be in the building in a year. So what we did is we worked diligently with the designers and the company that had built the first building to put together plans and we submitted plans in phases. The first set of plans we submitted to the county were the uh, civil plans, which is for all the dirt work. So while we were finishing some of the architectural plans for the interior and the extra, you know, the actual building structure, we were already digging dirt, running sewer lines, drop, bringing power lines in, getting everything ready so that when we had the foundation permit, which is the next step to the civil, we could install the foundation. And then what we did is we did each of the six floors, we permitted separately, along with a separate permit for the exterior of the building. So we added some cost doing that but because we did it in this fashion, we would never slow down. We were able to design, you know, design as we went on who was going to be in the floors. We knew what the size of the structure was going to be, what the exterior was going to be, what the roof was going to be. We knew all that. So all we really needed to do is figure out exactly who's going to be going into this building and what are their requirements. Well, as it turns out in this building, we built ended up building over 200,000 square feet of what's called 705B, which is secure space. This is a type of space where it's got sound attenuation, there's special film on the windows, uh, there can't be any windows in, that are available any place over, uh, it has to be 18 feet or taller. You have to go through a door that actually has a dial like on a safe to get into the space. So these are very secure spaces. Generally what happens is we build these spaces and then we could never go back in them without an escort. So we ended up building all this space and we actually, from first shovel in the ground to receiving certificate of occupancy on the building and the grand opening was 358 days. Uh, about three months into the steel construction, we, we had a very bad year. This was 2019. We had a very bad year that year for, I'm sorry, 2018 to 2019. And there was a tremendous amount of rain. We had 54 rain days that technically we could have not worked. There were some that we actually couldn't work. We had a microburst hit the building and take out seven of the roof trusses and probably 2,000 square feet of floor decking. So, I mean, that, that was a tremendous issue with, with, with that happening. So we spent three days just safing everything off so that we could be you know, getting all those pieces down because they, it was a lot of twisted steel. And uh, then we got back started on going back forward. And what we did to make the building go up faster was we built it in thirds. So we, when we were putting the steel up for the first third of the building, once that steel was up and the floor decking was in, while we were doing the second third of the building, we had people in the first third pouring the concrete floors and actually starting the framing of the interior of the structure already. And then they'd build the second third of the building and we'd be doing the same thing. So we were always moving, we were right behind them. So as fast as that steel went up within three weeks of the final piece of the steel being put in, we had all the, the floors in and we were framing everywhere. That's what this took. 
you know, we sprained with uh, metal studs, of course, and then we used a, a, a Dur Shield um, waterproof board or water resistant board so we could even start hanging sheetrock. The 705Bs require two layers of sheet lock, so we use that for our first layer. If the contractor is very, very important along with who they have out there managing. The company is uh, Missiles and Fire Control Lockheed Martin in Orlando, and we built for them a 254,000 square foot research and development tower, six floors. We actually don't run the whole bidding process. What we do is work with them to develop a statement of work and they generally the large companies we work for all have their own procurement people and so we're working with a procurement person getting that statement of work put together and then they have their own terms and conditions and and uh, other things that companies have to do such as Lockheed Martin who we do a lot of work for you're required to have a background check before you can get on site you have to be badged so well it's it's more efficient to hire a consultant to be in between a general contractor of a large company like Lockheed Martin or Raytheon. Um, these people build missiles and bombs. They don't build buildings. We build buildings. So our experience allows us to bypass a whole lot of problems that may arise by having a proactive approach and we right there to give the advice to the company so that decisions could be made one of the biggest factors in building a building especially if you're trying to build it in a quick amount of time is you need to be able to make decisions as you go you know there's lots of things that come up as you're going that you have to get answered and if you don't get the answer from the owner timely then things everything stops and that's the difference. We, we, we chase those answers. The contractor doesn't have the uh, relationship with the large company like the Lockheed Martin as we do because we're representing Lockheed Martin. So they're going to listen to us. We're going to be able to get talk to the right people in a timely fashion and keep the project going. Super, super important. And that we know the right questions to ask in the beginning. That's that. Sh that's developing that stakeholder package, which is called a statement of work.